Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virtual Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends, connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. Creatures to meet, it's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Good morning, and welcome to another episode of Small Fry School. You can see us every day at a, or every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Alaska time right here on YouTube. If you would have any questions today, feel free to text us at the number below. I am not wearing a mask today, but I have some friends that are helping me, and they are, and we're keeping a safe distance so that we are still being careful and safe. I would like to acknowledge that I live and work on the lands of the Aleutic Suksiak people and that their rich heritage continues to enrich our community. So last week, we talked about scuba diving and all of the different equipment that you need in order to go scuba diving. We also went on a dive adventure. We created our own diver and took them on a dive into the ocean. Thank you all so much for sharing. All right, so today we are talking about ROVs, or remote operated vehicles. These are vehicles that drive underwater and take pictures for us. So we can't go deep into the ocean, so we have to use these. There are five different layers throughout the ocean, um, and so we're gonna talk about those today. We've got the sunlight zone, the twilight zone, the midnight zone, the abyss, and then the trenches. So let's get our, our blood moving, and we're going to start with a stretch today, and we're going to go through those zones and um, kind of as if we were following down with an ROV. All right, so we're going to start, and we're going to reach all the way up to the sun. All right, so this is the sunlight zone. Next, go ahead and put your hands on your shoulders. Now we're in the twilight zone. So this is a little bit darker, kind of like when the sun starts to go down outside. Next, reach your arms all the way out. We're in the midnight zone. This zone is very dark, kind of if you were to go outside late, late in the middle of the night. All right, now we're going to go ahead and stretch down and touch our knees. This zone is the abyss. So we're having a lot more water pressure here. And finally, we're going to go all the way down to our toes. All right, and now we're in the trenches. This is the deepest, darkest part of the ocean. So let's go ahead and work our way back up to the surface. So we're going to go back up to the abyss. You all remember what's next? All right, we're going to raise our arms and we're in the midnight zone. To our shoulders, we're in the twilight zone, and then all the way back up to the sunlight zone. And this is actually the only zone where humans can actually go. So that was fun. Everybody feel warmed up? All right, perfect. So next, I want you to meet an ROV or underwater um, robot that we have here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. This is on the smaller side. But no matter what their size, they all have the same features. So it's going to have a camera so that it can take pictures of the things that we find and discover. 
It's going to have lights because it's very dark under the ocean deep down. So we've got to have lights so we can see. If you can see here, there's like a little arm and that is used for grabbing to pick up things or move things out of the way. And then we've got some propellers, all right? So that's how that, the ROV is gonna swim through the water. So an ROV or underwater robot is very much like a remote control car. So you can move it around, but it is done from somebody up top on a boat usually while the robot is under the water. All right, so let's see what actually the robot sees when it goes through the various different ocean layers. So let's watch a quick Let's clip. take a journey through the ocean layers. The first zone is the sunlight zone. This is the warmest layer because it gets the most sunlight. That means both plants and animals live here. It's also the only zone where humans can go. Look at all the different animals that live here. What do you see? Next, we head into the twilight zone. There's very little light here, so there are no plants that can live here. But there are some animals that still do. Some of the animals that live here have what's called bioluminescence. That means they make their own light and look like they glow in the dark. Both the biggest and the smallest creatures live here. The smallest are called zooplankton. Next, we move to the midnight zone. There is no light here except for that made by the creatures that live here, which again, we call bioluminescence. The sperm whale comes to this layer to feed, but does not live here all of the time. The animals that live here have special features to make it easier for them to do so. Some of the things you might see are the anglerfish, the vampire squid, or a tripod fish. Next, we head into the abyss. This layer makes up 80% of the ocean. It, it is very dark here, and the water puts a lot of pressure on the animals that live here. Because of that, many of them have very soft bodies or are invertebrates, meaning they don't have a backbone. You can see sea spiders, tube worms, viper fish, and Dumbo octopus here. Next, we head into the trenches. This is the deepest, darkest, coldest part of the ocean. The creatures that live here are very, very tough. Some of the creatures you might find here are the pearl fish, some types of eels, and sea stars. Without the use of the ROV, or remote operated vehicle, we would not be able to discover the creatures living in the trenches or the abyss as well as many of the other deeper ocean layers. Wow, it's pretty amazing how different each layer of the ocean is and how different the animals are that live down there. I have a couple of friends with me today that we're gonna look at and we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the modifications or special features that animals have in order to be able to live deep, deep, deep in the ocean. So do you all know what, what I have here with me? You might have seen them in one of our past episodes, but this is a Dumbo octopus. So some of the special features that a Dumbo octopus has is that they have really big eyes to make it easier for them to see in the dark. Also, there's a lot of water pressure when you get deep, deep into the ocean. So many animals are invertebrates. What that means is they don't have a backbone. So you can see here that my Dumbo octopus friend is very soft and squishy. So a lot of the animals in the deep, deep ocean are very soft and squishy like this. Another friend I have with me here is going to be a tripod fish. What do you notice that's special about this fish? Yeah, it's very long, right? So a lot of the fish are elongated like this so that it's easier for them to move through the heavy water pressure. What else do we notice about my, my friend here? So it's very light in color. So many of the animals deep in the ocean are either white or gray, or sometimes they're clear and you can see all the way through them. 
And that makes it so that they can hide from all of the different animals that might be hunting them and want to eat them. The next thing that they have is the bottoms of the ocean is very, very soft. So kind of like if you were to walk through a really, really wet mud puddle, you would sink in. So if they touch the bottom, they're going to sink in. So they have developed really long fins that are kind of like legs, and this helps prop them up so that they don't sink down into the ocean floor. So that's some interesting features. Who would like to actually see a ROV in action and see some real live deep sea creatures? Let's take a look. An ROV, or remote operated vehicle, allows NOAA scientists the ability to get up close and personal with coral reef ecosystems. Controlled from on the ship, scientists can zoom in on anything the ROV sees, coral, fish, and other objects at depths reaching down to 300 meters on the sea floor. ROVs are equipped with arms so they can actually pick up things like this one here who is collecting a sample. ROVs are equipped with lights. It's very dark at this kind of depth, so in order for scientists to be able to see what the ROV sees, they must have lights. The ROV also has a camera so it can record the things that it comes across. Without the use of ROVs, we would not have the opportunity to explore the depths of the ocean and discover such unique creatures as the ones we see here. That was amazing. Deep sea animals are so different. Did you guys see the Dumbo octopus like my friend we talked about before? Yeah, it was pretty fun to see an actual one. We are so lucky to have ROVs or remote control, um, remotely operated vehicles or underwater robots so that we can discover those things. What would you name something if you were to discover a creature underwater? So next we have a quick activity for you and we're, what we're going to do is you'll need these two different printouts. So we're going to have the, one of the ocean layers and then some of the uh, animals that are going to go into those ocean layers. All right, you're going to need something to color with, crayons, markers, uh, either glue or um, tape, and then some scissors which of course get help from your adult. So let's go up and take a look and start working on our project. All right, so here we have our ocean zones. So just like we saw, there's more light up in the sunlight zone. So I'm going to color mine so that it goes from light to dark blue. So I'm going to start up here with the light 
colored. And if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to text those in now, and I'd be happy to answer those for you. Shauna, we actually have a couple already. Are you ready to answer I a couple? I am. How deep is the deepest part of the ocean? So the deepest part of the ocean is about seven miles deep. So it's hard to kind of imagine how deep that really is. But imagine if you were taking a car ride, driving at sort of normal speed. It would take you about 10 or 15 minutes to go seven miles. So it's really far. Ooh, we have another one. Can people ride in an underwater robot? So there are some types of underwater robots that you can ride in, although those are then called an HOV instead of an ROV because it means that they are human operated instead of remote operated. So this layer is going to be just a little bit darker because there's a little less sunlight. And then next, we're going to go into the midnight zone. And remember, this zone, the only light that's really in the midnight zone is from the fish that create bioluminescence. Do you guys remember from the other episodes what bioluminescence is? Yeah, so it's when the animals create their own light and kind of glow in the dark. Got that layer. And then we're going to get down for a little bit darker into the abyss. And this area is like we saw before. It is very cold and dark down here. So the animals that live here have to be pretty, pretty tough. So we actually have a question about why is it so cold in the deeper parts of the ocean? So. Just like the ocean has the names, the sunlight, the twilight, the midnight, it's getting darker. But the reason it's getting darker is because the sun can't go all the way to the bottom. And have you ever been outside and you go under a tree and it's a little bit colder than when you're out and the sun is on your skin? So it's just that way. So the sun can't reach all the way to the bottom, so it's really cold. We have another question. All right. Can animals see in the dark in the deep sea? So they can. So just like we talked about with our friends and their special features to be able to um, adapt and live, they have special features to see. So one of them we saw with the octopus, the Dumbo octopus, and their eyes are a bit bigger. But also, they are capable of seeing a lot more colors than we are. And then sometimes they don't have eyes at all and they just see with their different senses, which are heightened. All right, so I have my ocean layers all colored. And now I'm gonna start to color some of my little animals here. So I'm gonna start with my Dumbo octopus. He's my favorite. Very cute. So we actually have a couple other questions here. Perfect. Elijah is wondering how much pressure is in the trenches? Ooh. So it's a little bit hard to explain, but think about if you were, the water has weight to it. So imagine if you had someone hand you, like you're carrying wood, and you have one log of wood and it's so heavy and then you have a second log and it keeps getting heavier and heavier so the deeper you go the deeper the pressure and so it depends on how much or how deep you are naomi is wondering what your favorite animal is in the midnight zone hers is the vampire squid that's my favorite too probably because it kind of looks a little bit like the Dumbo octopus and it has like these cute little things that look like ears. They're not really ears, but um, they make them look really fun. All right, so 
once we get all of our little animals colored, you can go ahead and have your adult help you. And we're just going to cut all of these guys out. So I colored several of mine earlier so that we would have a little more time. So what you want to do once you get them colored is just have your adult cut these out for you. All right, just like this. And then once we have all of them cut out, we can try and figure out which layer of the ocean they're going to go into. All right, so first, I have my stingray. Where do we think it goes? Yeah, it's going to go into the sunlight zone, OK? And this is, like we said, this is where most animals live. How about a dolphin? Yeah, definitely the sunlight zone, because you can see them jumping out of the water. So next, we go to the twilight zone, where it's a little bit darker. And that's where we're going to find our squid and maybe even our octopus, because they kind of like dark places. So if we go down into our midnight zone, we might find our sperm whale. And this whale also is in the sunlight and the twilight zone, but it comes down to the midnight zone to find food. And then do you remember when we talked about the anglerfish? These create bioluminescence. So they are in the midnight zone because they glow. And then also, my favorite and yours, Naomi, is the vampire squid. All right, next we go into the abyss, and that's where we can find some shellfish like the mussel and our Dumbo shrimp and some tube worms. And finally, once you get down here, there are not very many animals who live down here. But you can find some starfish and maybe our sea spider. Any more questions for me? Actually, yes. We do have another question. How do the fish in the abyss, abyss and the trenches catch food? So they use a lot of different things. Um, like you learned with bio, since they can glow, and then they kind of use themselves as like a, a fishing pole to lure in fish. Um, and a lot of them will just hide. Um, but uh, sometimes they also have really big mouths so that they can um, just sort of like scan the area and they take a big gulp of something and hope that they catch things. Because most of what they eat is things that fall down from the surface that goes all the way from the sunlight zone down to the bottoms of the ocean. So any other questions for me? All right, well, I had so much fun today, and I want to thank all of you for being here. I also want to thank Alaska 529 for their continued support, and my great friends here who have helped me out today, as well as Noah um, for all of the great photos and videos of the undersea creatures that we saw. Next week, Rebecca's going to be back with you, and she's going to be talking about the rocky coast. So stay tuned. We are going to have story time next, and we're going to be reading Flying Deep. And this is actually where some kids are going to go in an adventure in an ROV, the kind that you get to go inside, like you asked about the human-operated vehicles. So I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Flying Deep by Michelle Cusolito, illustrated by Nicole Wong. Imagine you're the pilot of Alvin, a deep sea submersible barely big enough for three. Today you'll investigate the site of deadly explosions. Many years ago, underwater volcanoes erupted. Red hot lava blasted from deep inside Earth. An ecosystem was destroyed. Remarkably, life returned again and again. Your mission, survey the site, confirm thriving life, 
and collect specimens. What will you discover? Lower yourself through Alvin's hatch. Flip on oxygen. Psss. Switch on carbon dioxide scrubber. Zzz. Two scientists squeezed between Alvin shudders gently when boomed out and lowered into the Pacific. Splash. Swimmers inspect Alvin's exterior. Surface controller calls. Free of ship. Atlant. 9 a.m. As Alvin descends, temperatures drop. Pull on a sweatshirt and hat. Sonar or anchor chains could entangle Alvin and trap you. Ten AM A desolate landscape stretches before you. Soar along sloping mounds of cooled lava. Like a puppeteer, use the miniature arm inside to control the large arm outside. Grasp a piece of glassy rock. Drop it into the sample basket. Movement out the starboard porthole catches your eye. A ghost crab. Could there be more? Fly forward. Watch for jutting vent chimneys as you tunnel through darkness. Eerie spires loom. Black smokers blast scalding water and poisonous sooty particles from deep inside Earth. Cottony fields of bacteria wave in currents. Shimmering water swirls. Pompeii worms, like sausages sporting dreadlocks, move in and out of tubes. Dinner plate-sized clams nestle among rocks. Giant tube worms feathery plumes away. Few humans have seen this blooming oasis. The vigor and variety of life is breathtaking. Noon. Eat peanut butter and honey sandwiches while you work. Don't drink too much. No toilet on board. Orange flashes outside. An unexpected visitor wraps pudgy arms around Alvin's manipulator arm. Tilt and zoom a video camera on the Dumbo octopus. Record its investigation before it slips away. Animals here thrive in toxic chemicals, blistering temperatures, and intense pressure. But you're safe inside Alvin. You're tired, yet energized, as you hunch over the controls. You're a pioneer of the deep. Two p.m. An elusive eel pout wins among the tube worms. Press the joystick left to shift Alvin sideways. Be careful. Rocky columns could collapse and pin you two miles below the surface. Lock the manipulator arm into place. Toggle the slurp gun into position and creep Alvin forward, ready to suction the fish. Slurp. Scientists cheer your capture. 3 p.m. Battery slow. Time to go. Call surface controller. Request permission to surface. Clear to surface. Dropped port weight. Click. Shh. Elvin rose slightly again, then slowly rises. Up, up, up through midnight darkness and starry bioluminescence. Inky blackness lightens to deep blue-green. Up, up, up. Blue-green brightens to aqua. Up, up, up. Aqua becomes clear. Alvin breaks the surface. KAQP Atlantis this is Alvin, channel 72. 
We got you loud and clear. Await divers to assist your return to Atlantis. Five p.m. Mission accomplished. Stand, stretch stiff legs, and breathe salty air. Squint as eyes adjust to glaring sunlight. Smile at the crew crowded on deck, eager to examine your discoveries. The end.